And you know, um, we're always trading time for money. Like always, I, I believe hundred yeah. percent of the time, uh, like if we're doing anything for work, it's just, if you're going to, if you're going to trade your time for money, try to make a good deal. Right. So if you build a business that can ultimately run without you, as we all know, most businesses, you're trading a lot of time in the beginning to set it up and you're sacrificing. Like I've worked harder on my own businesses, harder and more hours than I ever did as an employee, but it eventually gets to the time where the trade-off like compound interest, right. It starts to pay off and you don't, you know, you front load the, that time, you know, and this, so that on the back end you can, you can get some of that time back. And that's one of the things whenever I hear some, some people say, well, I don't want to trade my time for money. It's like, well, you always are just make it a good trade, right? Make right. it worthwhile. Well, I think, and I, and I like what you said with that, because the, the making it a good trade is do something you like to do. So, um, you know, when we show people about infinite banking concept and we show people how to take over the banking function in their lives, showing them how to do that and then seeing what they do with it. Again, they just kind of take off and it has a life of its own and everybody uses it differently. I mean, that's fun. And mm -hmm. yeah, we're taking time and even whether I'm uh, creating a course for our community or a video series or something else, I just did that yesterday. I spent like five hours, uh, you know, recording video. Well, I'm trading that time. I'm actually, you know, uh, that's going to be a, a course that's going to be in our community, but it's, it's, um, I'm, but it's fun because I feel like I'm taking stuff that I've learned and things that, um, that I've done by, um, and I've got 28 businesses that I've either, that I'm either passively invested in, um, that I'm actively in or on the board or whatever. And I started basically the same way, like with you, Brad, as I was get people that would talk to me about their business, I'd have ideas. And then either I would say, Hey, let's, uh, uh, you know, let's be partners or, or I'd buy the business or, you know, uh, or, you know, be an investor or I'd loan them money or something like that. Absolutely. So, um, and you know, sometimes when you loan them money, you really might as well be buying equity because, Sometimes that money doesn't flow back to you the way that you think. Yeah, so, more often than not. Yeah. So, um, uh, so what do you think is the misconception, or what is the noise out there, Brad, about owning a business, or hey, you should get a good job, or you know, what's the noise that hold people back? What What do you find when when you're working with business owners or people that want to be business owners but aren't yet? So the, the one to be like, so what keeps them from taking that step and moving forward mentally, yeah. potentially, you know, I think a lot of it is, um, it's fear, you know, it comes down to fear of the unknown. Um, where am I going to get, you know, what am I going to do? Right. Like that, that's number one. Well, what business would I start? What would be right for me? What would be wrong, et cetera. And then, you know, some people, once they get an idea, okay, this is what I want to do. Like maybe it's a fitness enthusiast who wants to start a gym, right? Let's just use that, you know, as a simple example. And now they think, well, I mean, they, they look at the entire entirety. It's almost like standing at the bottom. Let's say you're going to climb Mount Everest and you can see the peak up top. And then you can maybe see a little bit of a trail, but there's, mul I think there's multiple trails up Mount Everest. I haven't climbed yeah. it. And, um, and you're sitting down at the first base camp. You're like, wow, that is so, such an imposing challenge to do. And they imagine themselves trying to climb up the entire thing and getting lost and getting frozen to death all this stuff because they don't know what they don't know. And realistically, like people who climb up Everest or any mountain, I think that's big, they, they go up from base camp to camp one, to camp two, to camp three. And they don't, and a lot of times I think they go up to camp one and they acclimate there for a while. They don't just go up to one tag, go up to the next. And it's not this easy linear line. Uh, and they also have Sherpas, right? Sherpas who help them. They, they, they guide them, they carry their bags, they they, they, they've been down this road before, so they, or I guess they've been up this road before and yeah. they know where the dangers lie and they know where they're not. So I think that a lot of people just look at this overwhelming task of owning and growing a business. I've got to, I've got to set up a business entity. I've got to maybe raise money, maybe not. I've got to hire employees. I've got to do bookkeeping. I've got to do uh, you know, business taxes. I don't know anything about this stuff. I've never run a business before. And they just get overwhelmed by all of the things that have to be done eventually. Um, and so what I try to do, you know, whether it's with 
somebody who's trying to get into business or whether it's somebody who's got a business who is also equally overwhelmed by all the things they have to do is treat it like a set of dominoes, right? Like, all right, well, what would, you know, what has to happen? You know, let's maybe reverse engineer it. Somebody needs to give you money. What has to happen in order for them to give you money? Well, you have to, I guess, have a way to collect that money. And then you have to wait, have an offer. And then, you know, you just kind of go backwards. And when you go backwards and reverse engineer it, a lot of times what happens is you get rid of a lot of the, uh, I don't know what the word is, extraneous or these other other things that you think you have to do. They're not really necessary to get the, the uh, to get there, right? Like, let's not overload you too much. And then it starts to become a little bit more, uh, doable in their mind. I think, okay, I can do this. If I can just do this, I can get to there. Uh, oftentimes, depending on what somebody's doing, let's say they're trying to sell a service. Um, go sell it first, then figure out how to exactly how to deliver it. Don't worry about getting you know a full entity set up. Don't worry about all of this other. See if you can actually get anybody to buy what you want to sell. Um, and, or at the same time, I you know I, I just thought of another thing that I coach some people to do, which is uh, create a prototype. So in, in the world of design thinking, product design, like I've got a, I got a mouse here, right? Logitech, high-tech mouse. Well, I guarantee that the developers of this or of the Apple Magic Mouse or any uh, other product, they didn't just conceive of a product and then go full out to design the finished product. They would pro they, they design it to solve certain problems. They come up with guesses of how it might best work. And then they create a prototype. And this prototype allows them to test without the full commitment of all resources. So for an example, let's say this same business enthusiast wants to, um, wants to own a gym. Well, as opposed to just quitting their other job, raising money and starting a gym and then winging it, uh, perhaps they could, A, this sounds really elementary, go get a job, a side job at a gym. And it's not for the money. It's to see if you can learn a little bit and if you actually like being in a gym 24 hours a day and maybe you can even help um, you know maybe work for free intern offer your advice to somebody or not advice but offer your help so that you can learn a little bit and see okay this is what they're going through these are the challenges these are the things I would do different etc and even if it's part-time I mean a lot of business owners would love a part-time kind of apprentice who just wants to learn the system and it's a way to de-risk you know, big commitments and big actions. I would give the same advice to an existing business owner who's thinking about expanding or testing something new, like do a prototype, do a, an MVP, a minimally viable uh, product or profit center to just test it out first before over committing the resources. And what this allows you to do is gather really good data, but it also allows you to avoid heavy, you know, risk heavy commitments before you're quite ready and you can kind of adjust accordingly. So that's probably the advice I would give to both.